Hi, welcome to Waylo's Workshop. I'm Waylo, and this is Volume 2 of our review of Army Painter Battlefield's basing set. If you remember in the previous episode, we made it as far as to applying um, some of the basing material as well as the cork um, as rock. Now, what I didn't off screen was I went ahead and used the matte varnish over all of this and allowed it to dry. Now, the reason I used the matte varnish is if you recall, we were using um, some white glue, which uh, came with the kit. And white glue, of course, is water soluble. So if I'm going to use any type of a water based paint or water based substance on here, I have to create a barrier um, between the PVA glue and um, what I'm going to be applying. And that'll keep this material from breaking free and moving around and such. And as you can see, it's, it's, it's real firm. It's on here real well. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to start with um, mixing up a uh, kind of an ink tone wash. I'm going to be using the Army Painter Strong Tone Ink as well as the Army Painter Dark Tone Ink. And I'm going to be doing that as a, a 3 to 1 ratio. So I'm just going to go ahead and put in um, some drops of what I need. So I started with six drops of that material, I mean of that uh, paint, as well as I'm going to put in two drops of this dark tone. And then we're going to give that a good mix. And then I'm going to add a couple drops of water just to thin it out enough to be able to, because as you can see, that's kind of thick. That material is, uh, I mean, that uh, ink is, is a strong ink tone. And it is kind of thick. So I'm going to put in, um, let's say, three drops of water here. And again, what I'm using here is just simple distilled water. And as you can see, I made a nice kind of a thin mix of that. And that's running in, in, in the dish here kind of uh, nice and thin, like 2% <laughs> milk, as everybody says. So what we're going to do next is I'm just going to go ahead and use my Army Painter Monster Brush here and I'm going to get um, as much of that on there as I can and just go ahead and start applying it. And the idea here is I want to cover this surface up as well as the rocks and just give it a good, uh, a good again this is a, a larger size base so it, it may take a little bit more than what I've mixed up here. Um, but what I'm doing is, is I'm trying to get that scorched earth effect out of this material and then once this is dry I'll go ahead and dry brush it. So anyway I think you get the basic idea again this uh, even applies to the cork material that's uh, being used to simulate rock here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and paint this whole thing up and uh, we'll pick it up from there. Okay so, so our first layer has dried um, and it's I'm completely covered with that uh, blackish brown um, ink tone that I've mixed up and as you can see it's created a kind of uh, scorched earth effect already you're seeing a combination of the brown blended with almost a dark black color and it gives it that charred look and then between the rocks of course it's gone ahead and filled in all the smaller gaps so any place you might have seen the uh, gleam of uh, some PVA glue, even though it dries clear, you still get that reflectiveness. This went ahead and filled in all those little gaps, so um, it gives it that darker look. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and begin dry brushing. And what I'm going to use first is this oak brown um, from Army Painter. And what I'm going to do is... We're going to give that a good shake here real quick. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, just go ahead and use a small dry brush. And I'm not going to thin this at all. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this on straight out of the bottle. And I'm going to use my smaller dry brush here. Okay, that might be a little stiff from the uh, soap. And we're just going to go ahead and apply a little bit of that to the brush and then we're going to work it off until there's almost nothing left and then we're going to go ahead and start applying that on the here and at first you're not going to see a lot of difference 
but as you go around and do this um, you'll start to see the darker areas lighten a little which is that's all we're looking for we don't want that those extreme color contrasts that the uh, ink tone is left we want to kind of even out those tones so that's what I'm looking to do here with this color and the reason I'm not thinning it out is because I don't want it runny um, what I want to do is just go ahead and use it the way I'm using it right out of the bottle and trying to put it on as evenly as I can and it doesn't really take a lot um, it just takes a little bit of time and again we're just trying to pull that along the surface of this ground material because we want it darker which is what I'm trying to achieve here but I don't want it black I want it kind of a brownish darker color so that gives the sense of there's a a topsoil that's kind of been scorched is what I'm looking for which hopefully uh, that's coming out that way and that's about it that for that so we're gonna go ahead and let that dry a second and then we'll be back okay now that that is dried you can see that that dry brush has lightened the surface area quite a bit so we've got a nice uh, contrast in colors here and I'm just gonna continue on with that by introducing a lighter brown this is now fur brown that I'm going to go ahead and put on and again we're going to dry brush that the same way we did with the oak brown we're not going to thin it at all um, we're just going to work it into the brush and then go ahead and pull as much of that material back off as we can and then go over the surface lightly and now here you're probably going to see more of a contrast as this goes on and again a lot of times this takes it does take a little bit of time before it begins to show up you just have to have patience and work with it remember less is more when it comes to dry brushing better to put on more coats than to glob it on and then be unhappy with what you did and what we can do here is kind of mix this color in to the darker places that I'm seeing on the surface area again I want to keep those dark areas around the rock formations but in the open areas, um, I want to kind of balance out the colors here. And this is our second color. Um, we're going to do just a couple more. One of which I want to add in. Now you see there, that's a that was a bad move. I didn't get enough of that off. So how do we deal with that? Well, we're just going to go ahead and try to blend in as much of that as we can. And hopefully as that dries that dark color will overtake it a little but that's okay that's what we're looking for um, we're looking for a combination in those uh, areas we don't want it to all be one big color like that we don't want all one solid color in the base so again trying to pull off as much as I can and as you can see we're getting a nice uh, blending of these colors so I'm just going to keep going like this and uh, I'll show you what we come up with uh, for our next color okay stay tuned okay so again those colors are dried now and as you can see um, we've got a nice again balance of colors I haven't done anything too light again because we're looking to make this look like a dead earth scorched earth war has taken place here and it should look like uh, the ground should look as though it's suffered from that war now to get to a decent color on these bits of stone what I'm going to do is use a little bit of ash gray and again we're going to go with that whole dry brush without thinning so this is going to be straight out of the bottle and again I'm just using my small dry brush from Army Painter and we're going to put on a little bit of that material and then we're going to turn right around and take it back off again just like that and we're going to come in and work it over the tops of that stone and this might take a little bit more um, of that material to go ahead and get that coloring the way we want it 
but again we're not trying to apply too much here I'll work it in as much as possible as we can we want the stone to look like stone but we don't want it to look so gray that it doesn't look quite right and I may go over that again with a dark wash just to bring that coloring down but the idea is we want it to look almost like a chip jarred jagged stone so you want a combination of that brown along with the gray and again getting that into the places where you want it because we do want that material to really look less like cork and more like a rock um, and again I probably once this is dry I will go back and see how that looks and if I'm not real happy with it I'll go ahead and put the uh, a dark tone of ink back over this and darken that down because that does look a little stand it looks like it's jumping up there a little too much so let's let this dry and then we'll uh, have a look and see what we'll do as far as that dark tone okay after giving that a minute to dry I actually do kinda like the way that stands out I think it'll make a nice contrast between um, in the colors I'm going to go ahead and try to give this a, a, a quick dry brush of Wolf's Gray um, just to give the stonework a different bit of color before I go ahead and um, probably darken that out. So again, we're doing that straight out of the bottle, just the two drops. And we're going to take that material, put it on, get as much off the brush as I can get and then we're just going to go ahead and apply it. I'm just going to apply that to some of the higher places because I do want a variation in tone in the stone as well. I think that gives it a good bit of contrast and again we're entering another offering another color here it's different than what appears on the model and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go back and use that strong tone or I mean the dark tone and we're going to just give that a quick wash and let's see what happens to the to the stone when we do that All right. And again, of course, the, uh, it's hard to tell until it dries exactly how well all of it worked. Let me get a little bit more on the other side now. And again, with this, I'm not thinning it because I kind of want to give get this color to come back down a little. Um, because we do want it to just look like a kind of a, a light gray, gray blue darkish color and we don't want it jumping out of everything here so all right we're gonna go ahead and let that dry and then we'll see how these look stay tuned okay now I don't know how well the camera is picking that up but its stonework is looking really nice I've got uh, quite a few variations in color there in the stonework and what I want to do is just add one more real quick I'm just going to take a bit of skeleton bone and this is going to be a super light dry brush again we're going to take that straight out of the bottle and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and dry brush that real lightly over the stonework pulling as much of this material off the brush as I can because I just want to give this just these the, the lightest of brushes. I'm going to get that going a couple different directions there. 
is again if I just want to pick up the edges on this just what will happen is, is is that catches the edges of the stone and gives it the appearance of being even more jagged so what I'm trying to do is focus on just picking out the ends of that stone without getting it over the top I don't know if you're seeing that or how well you're seeing that hopefully that's taking real well but like right there and there hopefully you're seeing that but that's what we're looking for what I just did there what I don't want to do is color the whole stone I just want to get the jagged bits to pick up more of this white color because then it will look more craggy and rocky like Again, less is more in these situations, right? And I'm just using a really, really light touch there, just trying to get it to grab the edges of that cork material. But I do think that came out real nice. I think I'm going to go with this and leave it alone from there because I think too much might be just enough, yeah? And there you go. Okay. Now for the rest of the ground, I'm going to give it a real light touch of the desert yellow. Now if you remember our figure his jumpsuit or flight suit, our little orc pilot here, that suit is actually um, based in this same desert yellow. So I don't want to overpower the base with it, otherwise it'll it'll uh, won't give it the contrast and the pop that I want the figure to have against the darker ground work. So again, what I'm going to do is we're going to go with a real real light touch of this over the surface area I'm again not thinning anything we're just going to put some of that material on and then pull it right back off and then we're going to go ahead and super super light touch here just to see what happens Let's see what kind of a difference this is going to make to our ground area groundwork And then we just play a little bit with the coloring because we can do that. So we think we got it too light in one area. We can just go back and add a little bit of another dry brush color and bring that color down a bit. But the idea is is that we don't want it to show appear as though we've done any kind of heavy weathering or heavy painting work on here. You want to see different colors at different angles. And that's the idea. And this is easier to do with um, smaller bases, actually, <laughs> because as you get bigger, um, the blending has to be smoother and the contrast can't be as great as when you're doing it on smaller figures because, or smaller surface areas because it stands out right away when you're throwing too much color down. So you got to kind of keep working that those various colors that you're throwing in here all the time right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try a little bit of this gray just to see what happens to the tone of the surface here that does anything and I think we're going to call that quits I think we're going to call that done right about there. So if you hold on, I'm going to clean this all up, and then we'll start looking at putting on some of the grass material and that uh, razor wire. Okay, so stay tuned. Okay, so we're back, and uh, here's our grass material. Um, this actually 
comes with a little bit more than what I thought. It's actually a good, a fair amount. If you're doing smaller size bases, um, this material will actually go pretty far. In fact, this entire kit, as I'm looking at it, um, it's really worth the money because you could do quite a number of regular size base miniatures with this uh, without any kind of problem. Um, what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to go ahead and we're going to uh, get some of this super glue or um, there's the, the actual name of that glue. I just call it super glue. Um, I get the max cure kind and what we're going to do is we're going to apply some of that into an area where I want to put some of this grass down. Now I did not have the Army Painter brand because it did not come in the box. I am just improvising with what I have around the house here. So that's what we're looking to do. Uh, now if I need a handy dandy pair of tweezers here and we can go forward. Okay so what I'm going to do is we're just going to peel some of this off and apply it right to that glue area and just set it on there. And that's basically all I'm doing. Hopefully you can see that just kind of pulls off. It's like a, it's like it's stuck down with tape here and I'm just pulling that off. I'll go ahead and apply that. And then I'm just going to use Mr. Toothpick here to push it all down. So what we don't want to do is we don't want to super glue our tweezers to the base. So just like that I've got some static grass or uh, what we want to call that burnt grass. I will find out the exact name of it for you there and put it in there for you. Now on this other side I thought I would try some of this regular grass. Um, so we're going to get some of that PVA glue and we're going to go ahead and apply it here. And that came out a little bit too much probably but we'll see how that goes. So what I'm looking to do here now is I'm going to do the exact same thing I did with this other grass but I'm going to use the static grass and we're going to take this out of the container and just put it right down on that white glue. And we're going to give all that a chance to sit and dry. So and that's all I'm doing here. Is I'm just going to go ahead and apply it like that. So as you can see now, now you've got some nice stonework, rock work. I've got a bit of uh, old grass, a bit of good grass. And actually that stuck fairly well. I'll go ahead and apply a little bit more in the places where it's looking a little baldy. But uh, that looked like it went on pretty good. And we're just going to give all that a chance to dry right there. And then we'll come back and take a look at that piece of razor wire. And get our minute, and maybe even put our miniature in. Okay, so what I've got here is a good amount of this razor wire. And what I'm going to do is just go ahead and do like it says on the box and wrap it around a pencil. Um, it's really not going to take much. What you want to do though is kind of crisscross it. You want to keep this tight and close together because it will spring apart all on its own. Um, I'm trying to try to crisscross this a little bit so it goes over each other so it doesn't look uh, too geometrically perfect there and then we're going to pull that apart a little and that's all I'm looking for right there is some twisted up jagged kind of wire we'll thread that back through and make this look a little bit different and let's see is that big enough maybe let's see now if I take that and put that what I'm looking to do is put it right on that grass I think that should be about just fine so I'm going to go ahead and cut that and we'll get that applied. Okay, now that I've got that cut, that's what that looks like. And again, it doesn't look too uniform. It looks kind of crazy, like you would expect to see. And now what I'm going to do is go ahead again. We're going to put down some of that super glue here. And I'm going to dip this into that super glue directly. And then I'm going to go ahead and apply it into the grass area. 
so I'm trying to get a good amount of that super glue on there. I'm getting caught up too much in my wire. But we do want to get enough of this material on here so that it does stick. But we don't want so much that it's noticeable, right? So there you go. We're going to go ahead and do that and apply it right like so. that down at. Alright, and I think our figure is going to look real good here. Um, coming up, so we're going to put that right in like that. We're going to let that sit. And when that's all dry, we'll go ahead and get that figure mounted and we'll be back to show you our final result here. Okay, so here's our little orc figure. He's all done. And I really like the way our base turned out. And he's still actually drying. I super glued him in place. If you remember, I had a paper clip pin, uh, pin in his foot. I simply drilled a hole through the base and uh, cut it shorter and then went ahead and applied uh, super glue. So we're just going to let him sit and let this whole thing uh, dry overnight. And then uh, I can go ahead and do what I want with them. Yeah, I'll put them on display or put them in my display case or put them in a show or wherever he might wind up from there. But uh, yeah, that's it. There he is. Um, trying to get a little closer in here so you guys can actually see some of that detail as well as how that turned out. Again, there's that damaged hand that I repaired and of course I'm using that bob wire to try to draw attention away from that hand. I don't think it came out too badly, but uh, in the end, I do really like the way he turned out. Um, these were some of the new things I learned at Adepticon on how to uh, go ahead and paint a figure like this and you know, bring out that detail and the highlights and everything. And Well, I'm just uh, glad I was able to get that done and uh, share this material with you. So there's your basing material there. There's our rocks. And again, some of the detail on the miniature itself. He's got his goggles on and his gold uh, ring on his tooth and his targeting eyepiece and his pilot helmet and his altimeter and uh, his parachute. I think he looks really good. And to be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of works. Um, but these guys are so hilarious looking, <laughs> I had to paint them. So I plan on doing uh, uh, quite a few of them. I have another one that I just purchased um, that I'm going to go ahead and do uh, as well. Um, the pictures of this guy, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take some shots of him and put him up on Instagram, hopefully uh, sometime this evening. Uh, so you can be looking there for him. Uh, other than that, thank you very much for watching. Uh, as far as the review on this material goes, I highly recommend it. Um, I used very little of it for this miniature, so just if you're looking not to lay out a lot of money, but you want a cross sampling of some material you can use, I realize I did not get to use the uh, snow. Unfortunately, this is war, but we're it's, it's not uh, on the Russian front, so <laughs> I don't have any snow. Um, I will try to use it in the near future, but if it's the quality of everything else that I found in this set, it's quite excellent, I'm sure. Um, Army Painter makes all good things. This kit will probably do a lot of figures, um, so if you're looking uh, not to spend a lot of money to uh, be able to put some figures together and get them uh, based and get them on a, a, a gaming table, you may want to buy this set simply because it gives you a little variety of what you can do with it. Again, I highly recommend it. Um, I think he turned out wonderfully. I am quite happy with him. He is quite hilarious looking. So, thank you very much for watching. Um, remember to like this video. Um, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you've done any of these Cromlick work miniatures, I do realize with the Mega Paint set at one point they did give out one of these pilot figures that were collectible. I'm actually trying to get a hold of one of them. Um, I can't seem to find anybody selling them. No one seems to have one. 
if any of you happen to have one and would like to part with it, um, please drop me, a, drop me a quick message and let me know. Other than that, thanks for watching, and until next time. Thank you.